Hi and welcome to Velo GPS. In this video we're going to show you how to set up the data screens on your Garmin Edge 840 or 840 Solar. This tutorial will focus on data screen setup using the 840 rather than the Garmin Connect phone app. We will have a separate video featuring data screen setup via a phone which will be linked on screen and in the description below. We've started this demo with setup commencing from the home page. There is, however, a short run through at the end of the video of how to access data screen setup when powering on your 840 for the first time. You can skip to this using the chapter links in the description below. Okay, so that's the housekeeping complete, and we're starting from our home page where we're going to select the menu option. We're going to choose activity profiles, and then we're going to select the road profile. From here, we're going to choose data screens. And once we've gone into that, you can see that we have a number of data screens currently activated, probably seven or eight, which we will tidy up at a later stage. But for now, we're just going to choose screen number one, which is a basic data screen currently with six fields activated. Once you've gone into that, you can then choose to change the layout and you can have as many as 10 data fields displayed. Um, but we do tend to find that means the screen is a little bit cluttered. You can have as few as one, but for us the optimum is around about seven data fields, which there are two options for. So you can either have this one with three medium-sized data fields and four smaller ones, or our preferred one, which has that one large data field surrounded by six smaller ones. So once you're happy with that, you select the forward arrow from the bottom right-hand side, and we can then tap a field to swap it, or double tap a field to edit it. So if we just tap on the distance data field in the middle, you'll notice that it will highlight and then we can tap on it again and it will take us into the data field categories. So we've got a range of options here, a range of categories from speed, elevation, navigation, power, etc. But we just want to have a quick look at speed and if we tap on the speed category, you then go into the actual data fields that you can choose from. So I think we mentioned that we'd go for just a basic speed data field. Next, we're going to show you how to swap data fields. So you tap on it, tap on another data field, and you can see the average speed has moved across. We're going to edit a few more of the data fields that we've got on our screen here. So we're going to put a basic distance data field into the top right-hand side here. And then we're going to swap timer day by tapping on it and then tapping on timer over to the left. On the right, we're going to add in, I think we'll add in a power data field. So if we go to the power category oh, we'll just go back power category and we'll just choose three second power from here and at the bottom i then tend to prefer to have navigational data fields so if we just update that and scroll down to the navigation options within navigation i quite like having distance to next on the bottom left and that just tells me how far it is to my next turn we'll update the bottom right hand side data field now and again i have a navigational field there and i tend to prefer to have, uh, where is it now, next waypoint. Okay, so that tells us what we're doing at the next junction. So what the junction is, is, is it a right-hand turn? What's the road name? So once you're happy with the layout, you select the tick option. We can see we've updated our seven data fields and you select the back arrow. From here, if you want to add in a new data screen, we just select the add option. And again, you've got lots of options there, so e-bike, music controls, but we just want to add in a basic data screen. And it tells you you can add up to 10 data fields here, but I think we're just going to set up a basic gears screen, so something telling us about our DI2 if you have fancy gears on your bike. So we've selected that option for gears. We're going to add in front gear, rear gear, and then probably DI2 battery level because we want to make sure we don't run out of battery on our ride. We're happy with that, so we select the back arrow. Three data fields selected, we select the tick from here, and again, it gives us the option to increase the number of data fields that we have displayed, but we're happy with the three we've got. We hit the forward arrow, and again, we can now change what we have in data fields if we want to. We don't really need to, but you can tap on a field and swap it, or you can tap on a field, tap again, and go back into the data field categories. But we're happy with what we've set up for that demo screen for DI2. We're gonna select the tick from there, and we now have what I call a kind of running order of the data screens that are currently activated. So again, we will tidy them up in a bit. But for now, we kind of want to move screen two up the running order. So if you tap on the icon on the right hand side, it highlights, keep hold of it. And you can then drag it up the running order, up or down, and reposition it where you want. You can just drop it in there below screen number one. So we're happy with that. We're going to go back. 
and we'll just do a little bit of tidying up now and delete some screens from here um, so to delete a screen you simply tap on it and select the remove option so tap remove and then you just confirm that the reason for doing that, as we do a few more, is just to make sure um, that we don't have excess screens displayed. I, I like to have just three or four. Now, looking at Climb Pro in a moment, I think that's the only data screen that you can't remove it, but you can actually turn it off. So we just turn it off there. It will still pop up if we approach a climb, uh, but it's not always displayed. So just a couple more screens to delete. And that just means that you know we have our optimal. I, I tend to have three or four screens in my running order. Okay, so we're good with that, but just to show you they've not gone away, if we wanted to put them back in, you select Add New, and you can just see that those Workout, Segment, Power Guide, all of those screens that we've taken out are available to add back in if you want. So I think it's probably time to have a look at the map screen now. The map screen is one that I always have in my running order, and you can choose to have it displayed either always or only when navigating. You also have the option to have an elevation profile displayed at the top of the screen, I tend to have that turned off just because it takes up a little bit of screen space covering up the map. I like as much of the map to be displayed as possible, but you can have it there if you like it. And then you have the option at the bottom here to add in a couple of data fields at the bottom of the screen, which is really quite handy. I tend to have speed displayed and distance. So if you want to change those data fields, again, you can tap and tap again to go into the data field categories. We'll select distance and add that in at the bottom there. So once you're happy again, you can select the tick option. You can go back. And now we'll take a look at the elevation page. So the elevation page, again, you can edit the data fields. And the elevation page just shows you a plot of elevation against distance. And that gives you a kind of graph, a plot of what um, any elevation that you're riding looks like. And it allows you to pace yourself up that climb. But again, as with the map page, you can edit the fields at the bottom. But I think there may be a little glitch in, in this version of the firmware, an early one, because we go through the same process that we did with the map. But instead of updating the screen, when you select the field, it just goes back to the page here. And believe me, if we went back to the elevation page, it wouldn't have updated. But we'll show you how to do that on a slightly different route this may not be relevant because what I've shown you may work in future firmware updates so I guess it's probably time to go back to the home page now and we'll show you what the screens look like in practice so we select road and this is what the screens we've activated look like now if you were making a ride starting a ride so we've got our basic seven field screen at the start we're going to swipe across to our di2 and gears screen We'll swipe across again to our map screen with the two data fields displayed below. And then a final swipe again takes us to our elevation page where we'd have a plot of elevation when we were using it. Now, the way to change these fields for now, and you can do it also at any point, it's a handy little tip, is to tap on it and hold. And this is while you're undertaking a ride and it highlights. You can tap again and it takes us into the data field categories. We're going to go back to elevation and we're going to add in a different data field there, so a sent to next course point. So you can see by just doing that, that enables you to update any data field. So it could be on any data screen while you're making a ride without having to go all the way back through the data screens options from the home page. So we'll do it again from the main page just to show you tap and we've swapped one there. We'll swap them back or double tap and it takes you into the data field categories and we can update that on the fly. Now, I think whilst we'll do that, we'll just swap it back to speed. And in a few short moments, that's how to set up the data screens on your Garmin Edge 840. Okay, so we mentioned earlier that we'd show you how to navigate to the data screen setup pages when you turn your new 840 on for the first time. Once we've entered our preferred language, we're going to skip the phone pairing page as we want to get straight into using the device. We then update our preferred unit and time format and enter details of our gender, age, weight, and height. We're going to skip the sensor pairing page as we can do that later. At this point, you select the tick to choose the activity profiles that you wish to include. The profiles have subtle setting differences, such as GPS turned off for the indoor profile, but they can all be fully customized to your preferences. Once you're happy with your chosen profiles, tap on the tick and select the profile that you want to edit. If you've watched from the beginning of this video, you'll now recognize the profile options screen from which you can access and edit your data screen options as shown earlier. 
Last but by no means least, if you want to delete an activity profile, you simply swipe left and select the delete icon. If you found this video useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment below and check out our links and subscribe for plenty more Garmin 840 demos and tutorials.